handheld this morning on the way to the shop. Brr, cold. I went ahead and done been up this morning, done turned the heat on to get the shop warm. And I'm just going to walk by and show you another little project. We had a couple of uh, limbs and pretty good size crate, well, not crate myrtle, um, breadth repair that was here that fell down. And yesterday I was burning up the leftover stuff. You see this pile of ashes here. And so I lighted up a big fire and burned up and that fire pit is full of nothing but breadth repair tree ashes. Now I'm going to do a lot more of this while I'm retired now. It's just Monday morning and it's cold. The shop should be nice and warm but now got the heaters running. So we'll have some heat. Oh yeah, shop's warm. I mean it ain't I mean it ain't toasty warm, but it's warm. So we're gonna do some work today. Uh set up some stuff. One other thing while I'm bringing my introduction in. Today's project. This is a servo dynamo power feed. I decided instead of trying to redneck it, I'm doing it the right way. This one come from H&W Machine Repair, and they had a really good price. This is a, this was actually a Taiwan-made unit by Servo. I guess it's their value brand. This kit is supposed to fit my lagoon, and actually they shipped it a little bit cheaper, and it actually ended up costing me. $358 to the house. So that's where we are today. And first thing before I open this box is I'm going to get some of my camera mounts fixed up. Then we're going to go to work. First, we're going to open the box up and see what's in it. Get it out, read the instructions, and start the plan from there. I'm not going to film every step of the way, but I'm just kind of I'm going to know what's in the pack and slip. Take it out so I can open the box. There is the box. There's the box. There's the warranty. There's the return from point. And here comes. First fear out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, in my jacket pocket here, folks. Okay, there's that, 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 that. Bracket. New piece of the dial. And there we go. Here we go. Got all the parts. This is the gears and the washers and the spacers. Lay these out on the bench. This is the other gears and stuff. I guess that has to snap off right there. The brass gear. And the book. And the servo instructions. So there is feed unit. So there we go. So I guess we get the cracking here. I'll just start disassembling. Okay, I thought I'd hit you just a little bit there. I've already removed the the uh, uh, all the bearing knobs and everything here. Now I'm in the nut, so I'm just pulling this off right quick. It's not went too bad. Uh, I see somehow these, this key has been modified. It's different heights. I don't know if that's just a feature of a lagoon. I've not had a lagoon. I've never, well, I've never been into them, so I can't do it.
comes with a nut or something. There's a spacer there. And there's a bearing. Yeah. It's not coming. Well, it's just going to need a little help. Let me get a screwdriver right quick. Just ease and pliable. Fries too much, fries this off, I guess. This is actually an aluminum piece here, by the way. I need to try to get a little now. See how I kind of don't want to beat on nothing. Yet. Get a little bit here and watch. Get a little leverage up here. See if we can kind of work it. Oh, man. Was it just stubborn? This bearing must fit pretty tight. But, uh, see, that one's got other kind of torque on it, so careful because I don't want to bend the shaft or something. It'd really be easy to do. So, let me get a rubber, a uh, dead blow hammer and kind of tack it. Tuck a little bit there. That was a little bit of a challenge here. It, I ended up taking Dad's little hammer, kind of massaging it a little bit with it. So, I know this is going on. I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted right back up. And put the new piece on. I had to take my jacket off. I've got propane heater over here and electric space heater here working. Um, I don't really know what temperature it is. Let's find out. Hang on a minute. I'll let you know. Siri, what is the temperature in Dallas, North Carolina? Uh, it's 19 degrees outside. Okay, it's 19 degrees outside. You see what Siri tells us. And the shot is about 38 to 40 right now. 37 according to the temperature of my electric heater and the propane. And I've had it running a few minutes. I let this thing off about um, 10, about 30, 20, 30 minutes, both of them. I've got a third electric heater I can plug in if I really, really need it might do it. Now, actually where I'm cold at is my legs. I'm very tempted to do that. Let's plug this other heater in. Excuse me. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off. Alright. I'm going to turn this back on here and uh, and show you. Let's see forward. Reverse. Speed adjustments. This handle disengages, by the way. That's why you see it flopping. Okie dokie. Here we go. I'm working on the spacers now. One of the problems with these things is this plate is bent. Now, I noticed when I watched some other videos, I had this. So now I've got it apart. I'm going to straighten it. I'm just going to cold straighten it. I'm going to start just put it in, try my arbor press, and see if I can press it straight. All right, I got a little problem up there. The supplied spacers for the um, uh, thing just ain't deep enough. I mean, I should have done something. But I, I... All right, we, we're we're actually doing a little bit of that's a carbide mill I got in there, and what I've done. Set my Y X axis. Go my Y axis. I'm, I'm actually going to take my hundred thousand out of it. Just a minute. This is 
for the, uh, the safety bracket. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to have to put washers on it to do this. And what I'm doing is making sure I got enough room for the screws to fit the holes that's already been put in this machine. And I'm using the power feed, by the way. Even though I know I ain't got safety switches hooked up. the other side this is it. this one here will take it out see I flattened the bracket I think I don't need to show that on, on camera and so the bracket's flat All I'm doing is opening it up. I'll have to deburr on that a little bit. It's a little warm. On this handheld deal again, so if it's shaky, there's a switch installation. Uh, you've seen the milling being done to, to make that work. That's just a couple of metric bolts I had to go pick up. There's the, the switches. I set them about an inch off the end of the table. So there's a servo feed, you've seen that working. And uh, so there's the whole setup. Again, uh, this was real simple, it wasn't that complicated. Uh, that was the reason I really done a lot of looking before I jumped on servo feed. Because I've seen videos where other people had to do all this stuff in here. Uh, make a lot of stuff and I just did not want to be doing that stuff so basically what this is this is a bolt I mean now there's a little work right in here and I think uh, a couple years ago when I was looking at Jay Kilroy's video he said that these was bent and they was and they actually was enough so what I've done was just disassembled the switch and basically straightened it then when I got ready to put it on, the reason why I milled it out is there was previous holes on my mill where somebody had one had well this actually had a servo on it at one time. And uh, you've heard me tell it several times. I bought the mill without a DRO, without servo feed, because it come the story, and I'll repeat it just in case somebody didn't catch the other videos. I purchased this uh, mill from an individual who does machine rebuilding in in a local area, a gentleman by the name of Larry Guy. He it got the machine from the airport in Charlotte. This machine was in the airport machine shop, and they was replacing it with the CNC mill. That's what Larry told me when I went and looked at the mill in his place. And he bought the mill. Somebody had taken this here piece off, the servo feed, and they had taken the DRO off. And the story he told me that was the machinist who worked there done it was hoping that they would sell the mill for scrap and he could buy it. Well, Larry come along and do dude in the boys' plans. Because he was doing work for him and he offered them to trade the work for the mill. Now, that was a smart move on his part because the mill, when he bought it, I don't know what he gave for it without that. I know he said he had to buy 
the bearing mounts and stuff here and put on it to resell it. And I know he paid the riggers to go pick it up and move it. Now, I don't know what the same guy moved it for me, so I don't know what he charged to go to the airport and move, his, move the mill. So, more or less, I bought the mill with, with the manual feed, no DRO. So, I really like this mill, and I really enjoyed what little bit I've got to use it now that I'm retired. And it's ready. I've got a couple other projects that's going to be worked on. And you'll be seeing them and traveling along with me. So I hope you enjoyed all this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment. That comments are really important to me. It gives me more ideas what to do and how to do it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to it. Again, hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you on the next one.